Warhammer is grimdark, and Warhammer is outlandish, grandiose, epic scale fantasy, and usually Warhammer is at least fairly gritty. But recently, you may have noticed that Warhammer seems to be something else. Warhammer and its miniature ranges, and even a lot of its marketing, has recently been kind of cute. And it would be easy to assume that maybe Warhammer is just going down the Marvel Baby Groot slash Star Wars Baby Yoda sort of path. Because my god did Star Wars stumble upon the marketing strategy of the decade with that little psychic green gremlin, good lord. But I don't think that's what's happening here, because this whole little guy movement does feel like it's been building up for a while, to the point where now entire reveal teasers are forefronted by a single image of a goose. But how did the world's biggest and grimmest wargaming company and setting go from things like this to this? And what does this new influx of cuteness mean for the future of our favourite game? Let's find out. Whoosh. Before we get started on this very exciting video, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor for this video. Me. It's me. We've been working hard at Rogue Studios for our most recent merch drop, and now our store is overflowing with new shirts, awesome new prismatic dice, and most importantly, brand new Rascal Town Goblins. We even have an upgrade option for the Night Goblin, which comes with all new Rascal Town scenery, including this awesome mimic and this little goblin hiding in a barrel. So head on over to roguehobbies.com now and see if anything takes your fancy. And again, thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube and on my Patreon and via my store for nearly an entire year now. I can't believe it and I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Anyways, back to the video. Second whoosh. Whoosh. I cannot be the only person in the world who has noticed a real increase in cute, or as I like to call it, lil guy content coming out of Games Workshop recently. And if you're sat at home with your space marines and absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, then let me explain. Lil guy content for me is a few things, but firstly and most importantly, lil guys are just silly miniatures, which are usually pets, animals, general critters, companions, or accessories to the main miniature kits they come with, which are designed to be or are accidentally cute or funny, and usually they get a lot of love and attention from the community because of it. Think of things like the sassy nurgling, or the flat squig, or recently the cities of Sigmar Gargoylians. Those are what I would consider to be lil guys. The other kind of little guy content that Games Workshop produces is via their official Warhammer social media accounts. Things like jokey little posts, memes, quizzes, or even entire articles dedicated to these silly little miniatures. And to me personally, it really feels like in the last five years or so, these kind of miniatures and this kind of content has been coming out more and more frequently, and in return the community is receiving, reacting, and engaging with this kind of content with more and more enthusiasm. But as someone who is perhaps a little bit biased towards enjoying this kind of content, this is my son. His name's Squiggy, I love him very much. Everyone say hello to the Squig. Hello. I think I need to dig a little bit deeper and go straight to the source to work out if this is really happening or if I'm noticing it more because I really want it to be happening. Confirmation bias and such. Before we start talking about the very recent elephant or badger in the room, I really want to put all my cards on the table here. I started writing and researching this video about the cutification of Warhammer around two weeks ago, and it's been a video that I've wanted to make since I started this channel because I find the subject really interesting. And I thought that now would be a really good time to make this video because recently Games Workshop teased us for their new reveals that they were going to show off at their store anniversary with this image here, and I just thought that was fascinating. Not a picture of a gun, or the silhouette of a heavily armoured mercenary, or anything else you'd expect from the biggest wargaming company in the world, they led 
with a goose. And even before any of the reveals happened, the online Warhammer community was going absolutely feral for this little guy, as they should. So I thought I would go to the store anniversary so I could see the reveals and witness for myself the latest in a cute little miniature which comes alongside other maybe less cute miniatures so I could kind of tell you guys about it and prove a point in this video. But then this happened. They revealed an entire gnome forest friend themed Blood Bowl team. And now I think I'm in shock. <laughs> this is the most whimsical and silly release I have ever seen come out of Games Workshop. And it looks like nothing else they have ever done before as well. And unlike what I expected, it's not just one little funny guy in a box of say 12 other miniatures. It's an entire kit of gnomes and hedgehogs and badgers and zoomy little foxes and of course the geese but also because that's clearly not enough they've also added in a baby goose stealing a sock and trust me when I say it kind of felt like they were the stars of the show there were some other really cool Warhammer reveals which were just announced like these awesome dark oath guys this radical new orc war boss dude and this very wide chunky custodies but from what I picked up it seemed that people were really, really pumped for the cute little guys. And isn't that interesting? I think it is, don't judge me. I've just come back from the store anniversary and I'm still so excited and my brain is full of thoughts. And now I've spoken to more people and I've gotten their opinions on this cutification thing. And I think now, excitingly, this is an ongoing conversation happening right now that the community is having. So now I feel like I want to go even deeper into researching what Warhammer's relationship is to being cute and silly and why it seems to work so well. Before we talk about the miniatures in the main Warhammer lines like 40k and Age of Sigmar, we briefly need to discuss and give some credit to the silliest setting in all of Warhammer, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl was first released very early on into Games Workshop's history in 1986, and whilst it drew on a lot of elements of Games Workshop's existing tabletop games such as miniatures, list building, dice rolling, attacking, and special characters with special rules, it differs from a lot of the main range game systems because it's supposed to be funny. It's a game of fantasy football, which takes place in a kind of proxy old world setting where orcs, goblins, dwarves, humans, elves, and now gnomes too apparently, make their own ludicrous teams with hilariously bad pun names, wear ridiculous looking sports uniforms, and then battle it out in hilarious ways to win the game of American style football. And if you're not into Blood Bowl, then please consider getting into Blood Bowl. It's so such a fun game and in my opinion the miniatures that come out with it are some of the coolest, most diverse and funniest miniatures that Games Workshop produces. And yes, especially if you like little guys because trust me you will find no end of wonder and joy and animals in these kits. When I worked as an illustrator, graphic designer type for the Blood Bowl team at Games Workshop, it was some of the best fun I have ever had in my life, let alone my professional life. I remember being given the freedom to kind of go crazy and come up with funny things and draw cute and funny little frogs and goblins and squigs for Spike Magazine, and I remember spending lunch times with the other Blood Bowl team coming up with terrible puns for the cards and being filled with delight when a sculptor would show us a new and creative place that they had hidden a ferret on a halfling. And sometimes you'd forget and you'd have to remind yourself that you were working for the same company that makes miniatures like this. And whilst I think it's really important to remember that a lot of 40k and the setting when it was young was born from silliness, I think it's fair to say that the OG for silliness and especially whimsy was definitely Blood Bowl. And they are certainly continuing continuing to carry that beacon even into their most recent release, but Blood Bowl is supposed to be silly. What I really want to work out in this video is how we got miniatures like this and this, which turned into official Games Workshop posts like this and this, in a game system which we were told had nothing but eternal war and strife.
Let's once again take a little step back in time for a minute, because it's all well and good for me to sit here and act like this little guy thing is a brand new phenomenon, where Games Workshop has just worked out that if they dangle a cute miniature in front of us, our hearts and our purses will magically open. But I don't think that's true, because maybe Warhammer has always been cute. The truth is, is that these little accessory pet type of miniatures have kind of always been around the main miniature ranges in some way or another, and the earliest examples I can think of are in the green skin ranges, both in fantasy and 40k, but especially things like the classic grots, snotlings, noblars, and everyone's favourite tussle truffles, the squigs. Ever since orcs first arrived on the scene when Warhammer was in its infancy, they have always been accompanied by a menagerie of very, very unserious little guys. Snotlings and grots are often depicted in goofy little poses, like these ones making some rude gestures, and these ones just pooping in some helmets, and even the noblars, who are the ever-bullied punching bags of the ogres, have always had a bunch of delightfully whimsical sculpts, with one of my favourite ones being these two little troopers here, where one has lost his legs so his buddy has tied him onto his back so we can join in the fight. Delightful. And it would be an entire video unto itself to try and track every single miniature in the squig range which has brought laughter and joy into my life. As they mostly all fall into the delightful little pet category, and range from large and lumbering to tiny and silly with no thoughts whatsoever. But again, I almost feel like orcs and greenskins and goblins are kind of cheating to include here, because like Blood Bowl, they're kind of supposed to be the comic relief of the 40k setting. But I love that about them, and maybe uncoincidentally, greenskins are my favourite faction both in 40k and Age of Sigmar and Warhammer Fantasy, and I think it's really important to talk about them here, because maybe the popularity of these funny little guys in the orc releases may have paved the way for the future of cuteness in Warhammer. So what about some other early releases that aren't greenskins that also have the little guy factor? Of course, there was the old Chaos Familiar kit, which was literally a package of ten little guys, some of which were, I guess, kinda cute, and some probably should never have seen the light of mainstream release. But whilst I personally find a lot of old miniatures like Squat, Snotling, Squigs, and Bob Ollie Orcs to be very cute and charming, I don't think the miniatures of this era were specifically designed to make 15 to 40 year old wargaming fans go, oh what a little cutie pie, let's take him home. We all know that orcs and goblins and therefore squigs are supposed to be a bit silly and sometimes cute even, and I guess skinks and skaven and tyranids have also long been considered to be the cute factions despite their miniature designs intentions. But like I said, recently in the last five years or so it feels like something has changed, it's become more drastic and certainly more obvious. So when do I personally remember the cutening starting to happen, and what were the miniatures that tipped us into realising that maybe war and cute little critters were a perfect mix? Q Pal World. Pal World worked it out. I think that the first miniatures that I noticed had the lil guy effect outside of the orc range and the familiars and the other miniatures which I don't think are supposed to be cute but I do find cute were the nurglings. Nurglings are the perfect example of what I'm talking about in this video. They're small little accessories to a very bulky and shooty mainline mini range, which similarly to the orcs are supposed to be a bit of comic relief in an otherwise very grim dark setting. We all kind of got used to seeing these guys popping up here and there in releases and then we all go, oh you silly nurglings with your vomiting and your butts all out, and then we kind of moved on with our days. But then, in 2017, something happened, something monumental, a miniature got released which changed the course of Warhammer forever. The Sassy Nurgling. And if you weren't there, that may sound like a lot to pin on one miniature, but let me explain. Like it or not, these days memes are quite important, and if you make a good meme, it has the potential to be liked, shared, quoted, reposted, and seen by millions of people. And from a marketing perspective, that is quite juicy. One of my personal favourite types of meme is when you find a picture of something, and trust me, it can be anything, and then you go, ha! 
yeah, yeah, that is literally me. And then you share it with your friends and they go, oh my God, that is literally you. I think this kind of funny meme joke is popular because it plays on the human ability and want to be hyper empathetic. And so when everyone saw a pudgy naked gremlin putting on a helmet and doing his best to be a confident little king, we all related. We all felt that. And maybe as you could imagine, or maybe as you would predict when this miniature got revealed, the community went into uproar. The memes were flowing, the shares which just said me were rolling in, and the Games Workshop official social media accounts joined in as well. And still to this day, it seems like if they make a social media post which has a picture of the sassy nurgling in it, it just blows up. People love to see it. And some people love to see it so much that they got it tattooed on their bodies so that they and all their family and friends have to see it forever. But most importantly for Games Workshop maybe was the fact that people were talking about this miniature. Maybe not so much the big guy that was included in the kit, but people seemed to want to buy the miniature just for the sassy nurgling and maybe just for the memes as well. Then just when we thought that the sassy nurgling phenomenon was a one-off and couldn't possibly ever be replicated, in 2019 Games Workshop gave the people exactly what they wanted once again and released Crab. Doonclaw is a crab, I don't really know what else to tell you. He came out as part of the Lathian Soul Raid kit, which is an Ideneth themed Underworlds warband. And once again the crowd went absolutely nuts for this miniature. Although unlike the sassy nurgling, I'm fairly sure this crab wasn't necessarily designed to be cute or funny, he kind of accidentally was. And as soon as he was revealed, the hype train for this miniature left the station with absolutely no intention of stopping. There were memes, painting tutorials, articles solely about Durenclaw, both from other sites and official Warhammer community ones, and people were making entire warbands of just crab, and he even landed second place in the 2019 Miniature of the Year vote. And it seems that for a while the entire community, including myself, just became obsessed with the crab. And I'm just speculating here because I don't know the actual facts and figures and numbers, but I reckon that that Underworld's Warband may have sold quite well. And then I also reckon that Games Workshop may have paid close attention to the reason why. Whilst I think that the sassy nurgling and the increasing presence of Warhammer fans online were the beginning of it all, I truly believe that doing claw was the thing that set the wheels in motion for now what is a consistent theme coming from Games Workshop. Because it does seem like nearly every release that comes out since has included some kind of little guy pet or cute accessory to go with it. This pattern is especially noticeable in the Underworlds and Warcry Warband releases where it seems like every other release has some form of miniature which can really only be described as adorable. From pirate monkeys and parrots to little warpstone thieving rats to fairies and cages, fish and just actual straight up adorable puppy dogs, these smaller kits seem to be where a lot of the sculptors and designers get free or at least freer reign to cut loose and add a bit of fun and flavour into their kits. But it is in no way limited to these smaller games. To name but a few of my favourite little guys to be released in Age of Sigmar recently, we have the baby troll sat on top of Trug, the Warhammer Plus exclusive familiars including the Squatty Potty, this cool looking cat lady's cat, the Griffhounds who have recently turned into cuddly toys, all the little mushroom rocks and everything else included in the Gloomspike Git Kits, more dogs, even more nurglings, and of course the whole selection of teeny tiny gargoyles which came out with the recent Cities of Sigmar release, who are all various degrees of comedy gold. And whilst you may think that the grimdark future of the 41st millennium would be safe from the malign influence of cute little animals, you'd be wrong because guess what? More dogs! So many good little boys whose job it is to serve man's true best friend, the God Emperor. But also they get birds and cats too, yay. 
like I said, those are just a few and I bet I'm gonna kick myself later when I read the comments and you guys say, oh, you forgot about this little guy and he's my favorite and I feel really bad that I missed him out. But yeah, most of those miniatures I just talked about were released in the last five to seven-ish years maximum and I would consider them to be new releases which fall into my perceived little guy hype conspiracy theory. But as if that's not enough, it seems like with every new reveal of a new cute miniature, as if they know exactly what we want, the Warhammer community and official Warhammer social media posts will start pouring out, encouraging us to pick which nurgling we feel like today, or to read an article about which dog is the best boy in the whole galaxy. Because like it or not, I think they've realized that people just really like pets. And I've noticed this phenomenon too with my own miniature range. My last miniature had a little frog on him and the amount of comments which were like, oh, the frog is the best bit. I love frog, frog is so cute. I'm kind of encouraged to kind of go harder on the frogs and maybe add five or six frogs to my next miniature, I don't know. But that's another point I want to make because one could assume that this whole little guy hype is a marketing ploy adopted by Games Workshop where they dangle one cute miniature in front of us and we all go feral and go out and buy the whole £50 kit. But I don't know if that's true necessarily because whilst I didn't work in the main studio, what I noticed was miniature designers and miniature sculptors who were just as enthusiastic as the community to see these little guys featured in the universes that they and we love. For better or for worse, Games Workshop often hires massive Warhammer fans to work for their company. And so it's kind of hard to tell which one comes first because if the community are crying out for these cute little miniatures to be released, then chances are it's probably because internally these sculptors and designers are also crying out for them as well. So what is the future of cuteness in Warhammer? Will we suddenly see our grim, dark, morally and religiously ambiguous super soldiers taking a backseat to an army of cute little puppies who just want to be loved and who have been left all alone with guns? Well, no. I don't think so. And if you've watched this video thus far and you're kind of thinking, this isn't my 40k, my 40k is grimdark and serious and all this silly cuteness isn't quite my jam, then don't worry if it's not entirely for you. It doesn't have to be. Not everything should be 100% for you all the time. That would be weird and it shouldn't affect the way that you enjoy your hobby. Some people love the Tao aesthetic and some people absolutely hate it. And I know for a fact there is a ton of people who would rather never see a space marine again. If someone wants to turn up with an army of cute pink sparkly tyranids with little bows, then it shouldn't really impact your enjoyment of the hobby. As long as you're not mean or hateful or unpleasant, you're a grown up and you can just enjoy the little bits of the hobby that you like and which cater to the things that you enjoy. But what I do think this sudden influx of cuteness may mean is that Games Workshop has found a way to maybe be more personable and have a bit more fun with its miniature ranges and maybe connect a little bit more with its customer and fan base. And maybe that'll make you feel a little bit more like you're part of something, whether it's the Warhammer settings, the range of fantastical miniatures, or even just part of a community which enjoys sharing silly pictures with each other. And I am afraid that's all we have time for today. As usual, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye!